I would like to start with the president of the International United Mining Workers of America, Mr. Cecil Roberts, to come to the podium and address the people. I want to thank uh, all of you for coming today. All of the members of the United Mine Workers who are here today and or their families or any coal miner or family of a coal miner that's here, if you would stand and, and be recognized and if, you're, and if you're already standing, hold your hand up so we can acknowledge you because that's what this is all about. I want to acknowledge a few people in the United Mine Workers, if I might. Bob Butera, our regional director, who's worked hard on this uh, event. Bob, stand up. Uh, Roy Fernandez, auditor teller for United Mine Workers, also serves our international executive board. Roy, where are you? Over here. Over here. Thank you. And a dear friend of mine, Mike Dalpez, Vice President of District 22, has had another death in his family. Many of you know that a month ago his daughter died at a very young age of 43. Just recently, in the last week, his nephew, who is 43 years old, also passed away. So if we could just have a moment of silence for Mike's family, I would appreciate that very much. Thank you very much, and God bless all of you for that. We have a very special guest with us. You know I'm the president of United Mine Workers, but there's another person here who serves on the AFL-CIO Executive Council with me, and she's the president of the American uh, the Association of Flight Attendants. Uh, my friend uh, Sarah Nelson is here somewhere. Sarah, where are you? Right over here. Get, welcome, Sarah. I'd like to just take a moment or two, if I might, to thank uh, to so many people who worked on this who have uh, called Greece uh, their home and who have either come to America and become citizens or still live there. You have done a fantastic job of raising money and honoring our brother, Louis Tikas. He is indeed a hero in the United Mine Workers. He is a working class hero, and he is an American hero. So let's welcome all of our brothers and sisters from Greece who are here with us today. Give them a round of applause because we're proud of them. And I would just like to make a few observations of a might about our brother, Brother Tikas. Brother Tikas um, gave his life for the rest of us. The Bible tells us there's no greater thing that you can do than to give your life for somebody else that you love. And Brother Tikas loved his brothers and sisters at the Ludlow Tent Colony. He loved his brothers and sisters uh, in the United Mine Workers. He loved his brothers and sisters in America. And I want you to think about something. Brother Tikas became an American citizen in 1913 when in less than a year he had been killed and murdered and became a martyr at the hands of the government of the state of Colorado. And I think that he goes down in history as one of the greatest, greatest leaders ever in the United Mine Workers of America. And death cannot keep the fact away that he has stood for many, many years. We have a statue today, but I want all of you to understand something. He lives within our hearts. He lives within every member of the United Mine Workers. He has been an inspiration to us for well over a hundred years now. There has not been an event at Ludlow that we did not speak of him and honor him and pay tribute to him. Now, now, as people walk through this town and they look over here, they will see him towering over all of us and we shall never forget our brother who stood with us at the end of this strike back in 1914. It is no doubt, there is no doubt that most people thought we lost that strike. But I want you to know we didn't lose anything. 
because the inspiration that we gain from the way that people fought, the way that they stood up, and the way that they indeed died, we will never forget that. And we have a middle class America because of what our brothers and our sisters did standing up with us and Ludlow. Had they not stood up, brothers and sisters, we would not have the America that we have today. United we stand, divided we fall. A wrong to one is a wrong to all. God bless all of you. And God bless Brother Tika. Thank you, President Sergio Rogers. And now I would like to invite to the podium the President of the Regional and Director of the United Mine Workers of America, Mr. Bob Botero. Well, I have one thing I know for sure is I sure shouldn't be following our President Cecil Roberts. <laughs> uh, I just want to uh, thank you uh, for being here today. I want to, again to thank uh, Michael Servos and the Greek community for what you have done here today. Uh, I do want to uh, thank my brother uh, Mike Romero and his wife Yolanda for what they have done. And again I want to welcome you here today and, and one thing I do want to say or remind you is that tomorrow at 10 o'clock we do have our annual Ludlow service. This is a service that we have conducted now for consecutively for 104 years and please everybody is invited to come out there. It's at 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, the service usually ends about 12. I'll be very short and, and, and brief with this but again thank you for being here and thank you for your interest in not only uh, Trinidad, Los Animas County, uh, Louis Ticas, uh, United Mine Workers, but thank you for uh, showing your support. Following Bob, I would like to invite to the podium the Honorable County Administration Administrator, Ms. Priscilla Fraser, and the, city commi uh, the County Commissioners, Dean Moltres, Luis Lopez, Mac Luden, are they all here? I know Dean is here. Thank you, Dean. Uh, earlier I spoke up at the uh, Holiday Inn uh, and uh, it was quite emotional. Uh, my grandfather was a Greek immigrant and a 37-year minor and uh, when I met Mr. Servos we uh, we shared a little bit of a story and we both had tears in our eyes. It was a great honor to dedicate and be able to vote on the road of Louis Ticas Memorial Highway. Um, today I spent, you know, I walked in there, we, we have no Greek family in the United States. And uh, I was telling a lady today, when we walked in, we have no Greek family here. And she says, well, we're here, you have family now. You do now. You do now. Thank you. And uh, it, it, it truly was, uh, for those that didn't participate today, earlier today, it was like a big family reunion for me. But we, like I told them today, it's important. There was children there. Uh, George uh, had, his, had his kids there today, and it was good to see because we cannot, we cannot do the right thing in the present or the future if we don't remember our past. And what our ancestors did in the past and and what they went through so we can be here today and have what we have today um, we must remember that always and uh, I'm just very appreciative for for what Louis Ticas did um, for the American worker and he gave he gave everything he gave his life 
for the American worker. But um, I want to thank Michael and Michael Servos. Um, I mean, for what he did today, uh, all the work that he put in um, to get this accomplished. Um, Yolanda and Mike, they, they worked their, their tails off to get this done. Uh, Mr. Tikas' nephew, I want to welcome you to our community. <clears throat> Thank you for being here. And for all the Greek people that are here today to take their time out uh, to, to be here today. Um, and the, uh, the Hellenism community, uh, Mr. Botatero, uh, thank you for all that you've done. Um, but for, uh, like I said earlier up there, um, she said, I, I really like how you ended it. Welcome to our county. Welcome to our community. And like the old sausage maker told me, take your time leaving and hurry back. But welcome and God bless you all. I don't, I don't think I can top what Dean has just said, but you know, in, in thinking back on that, that fateful day, uh, you had a gentleman who was a partner in a coffee shop, did some things in Northern Colorado, came down here, and through his death, and it was, it was a horrific death, and it, uh, nothing that we can be proud of, but through his death, there was a birth of a new movement that really brought things forward. And we just thank all of you, and we thank you for Lewis, that, that you allowed him to come here and be part of us and, and move us forward in this labor movement and again, thank you, and uh, as Dean said, uh, come off, and we will always welcome you. I think at this moment it's uh, quite appropriate to call the president of the Southern Colorado Coal Miners Memorial and Museum, Mr. Mike Romero. Is he here? We always get him off guard, but he's a terrific speaker, so... One thing I didn't say this morning is when uh, I spoke at the holiday, and is the monument at the graveside of Louis Tikas was put up there by the local union, 9856. Night of my work in America. Again, I want to say I want to thank all the Greek family for coming to Trinidad, Colorado. For Louis Tika statue, that we're going to unveil pretty quick here. And I want to thank everybody for showing up, and uh, it's going to be a great day. And I thank you all. And now I would like to invite to the podium, if he's here, and I hope he is, the Honorable Mayor Rick, Phil Rico and um, uh, City Manager Greg Sun. Welcome to Trinidad, and especially I want to welcome the family of the, the uh, Lewis Tickets for traveling such a long distance to be here with us today. I'm honored to be here with you on this momentous occasion. On behalf of myself and our city council, would any members of our city council please come forward or stand up? Be recognized. Michelle Miles. Carlos Lopez. Uh, Joe Bonato, Miss Karen Grego. I'd like to thank Mike and Yolanda Romero, Bob Otero, members of Union of Local Union Number 9856, UNWA International President Cecil Roberts, Michael Servos, 
and members of the foundation of the Hellenius Foundation for this very important dedication. And also welcome Sarah Nelson who is here with us. We are here today to dedicate this bronze statue of Louis Tickus, who gave his life for his fellow miners and the cause that would help to shape the working conditions that exist today. Not only for coal miners, but for all working men and women in the United States of America. Every year we gather, we gather in Ludlow to remember union organizer Louis Tickus and those men, women, and children who lost their lives in, in the massacre of 1914. These people died for a just cause, the recognition of the union as a bargaining, as a bargaining agent, an eight-hour workday, better wages, working conditions, and of course there were a few other demands. We applaud Local Union 9856 and all unions across the country who year after year come to Ludlow to remember and to honor those who fought and died for those rights. Most families in Trinidad and the surrounding area were binding families. There are four members on city council whose fathers or grandfathers worked in the local coal mines. Myself, Councilman Anthony Matei, Councilman Joe Bonato, and Councilman, Councilwoman Karen Grego, her husband, worked in the mine. Our city manager, Greg Sund, has worked in a gold mine, I think, in South Dakota. We understand the plight of the coal miner. The miner never knew his fate when he walked into the mine. We are a community of coal mining that no longer exists in this area. We must, however, remember that coal mining helped to build the city of Trinidad. This has left a legacy to this generation and for generations to come. It is with great pride that the city of Trinidad was chosen to house this statue. The significance of this bronze statue of Louis Tickus and the Ludlow Massacre is something that we must never forget. I want to end with a short story following with a proclamation from the city of Trinidad. This story was told to me by Mr. Joe Rail, who passed away a few years ago. One day a retired coal miner in his late 80s was going fishing to Monument Lake. Upon seeing some of the men on the side of the road, he stopped and asked, what are you doing? Striking, they said. The retired miner, a true union man, pulled out his fishing lunch, divided it into equal parts, and gave it to the striking miners, and proceeded to sit with them on strike. That retired miner was my father. This is only one story. <laughs> of the thousands that families have heard that show the camaraderie and struggles of the coal miner. Share your stories with your families, friends, and anyone who will listen. At this time, I would like to read the proclamation from the city of Trinidad. Office of the Mayor, Trinidad, Colorado Proclamation. Annual Ludlow Master Commemoration and Lewis Ticka Statue Dedication, June the 23rd and 24th, 2018. Whereas, in September 1913, the United Minor Workers of America organized a strike against the unsafe and unjust working and living conditions at the mining camp 12 miles northwest of Trinidad at Ludlow, Colorado. And whereas, on April the 20th, 1914, Colorado National Guard and the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company camp guards, camp guards retaliated with an attack on the 10 colony of 1,200 striking coal miners and their families at Ludlow, Colorado. The massacre resulted in violent deaths of between 19 and 25 people, including two women, 11 children, asphyxiated and burned to death under a single tent. And whereas, the United Minor Workers of America gather annually at the site of the Ludlow Massacre Memorial, a national historic landmark to remember what was the deadliest single incident in the coal mining fields in southern Colorado, and one that culminated in positive changes to the working and living conditions of American workers today. And whereas much of this region's history is tied to the coal mining industry, and many local residents 
have immigrant ancestors who came here to work in the coal mines and perished in those mines or in the Ludlow Massacre. And whereas, through the generosity of the foundation of the Hellenism, foundation of Hellenism, Trinidad is proud to unveil as a bronze life statue to Louis Tickus, a Greek immigrant who made his way to America and became the main labor union organizer at the Ludlow camp during the 14-month cold strike, ultimately giving his own life during the massacre. Now therefore, I, Philip T. Rico, mayor of the city of Trinidad and city of Trinidad, Colorado, on behalf of the entire Trinidad City Council, do hereby proclaim June the 23rd and 24th, 2018, as annual Ludlow Massacre Commemoration and Louis Tickus Statue Dedication, and urge all members to remember those fallen coal miners and their families of the Ludlow Massacre and the importance of this pivotal event in American history. A witness hereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of this city to be affixed. Mayor Philip T. Rico, dated June the 23rd, 2018. Bob, would you please come and accept this? And thanks again for everyone for being here. Well, thank you for all of you showing up today and helping commemorate the uh, unveiling of this statue. I was, I'm happy to have played a small role in getting it put up and all of the city employees who were involved in arranging this and making sure that it was up here on time, making sure that we put it in a location that was prominent and one that will be visible to everyone for a long time. As a former employee of the Homestake Gold Mine in Leeds, South Dakota, I've really enjoyed getting to know uh, the Romeros and the uh, information out of the museum here because a lot of things in there are things that I recognize from when I worked underground. I didn't work underground for long, about four years, but uh, setting rail and doing mining and different things like that is something that I'll never forget and it's nice to have a place where I can come and I can see things that I recognize from when I was younger. So, thanks again. Before I call to the podium the next speaker, I would like to give a heads up to the Cretan Dance Idomeneas Youth Group from Denver. They'll be performing some Cretan dances from the birthplace of Louis Ticas, Crete, the island of Crete. So you have a few minutes to get ready. Cue the music. At this, at this moment, I would like to invite to the podium the General Council of Greece, Honorable Gregory Karahalios. Good afternoon to all of you. It's a great honor for me to be here and to represent Greece in this exceptional day that we all gather here to pay tribute to an exceptional person, a guy who put his life above his, himself and the others, a poor immigrant who came here searching for the American dream, but he didn't comply with the system. He tried to change the system, and he tried to make it better for all of us. And I'm saying for all of us because his actions reflect not only his era, but also our lives. People like him are always in the forefront of every action, of every good action. Being a hero in one country is already a rare thing. Being a hero in two countries is something very, very special. And Luis Ticas is a hero in two worlds. If we ask if he lost the battle at the end, we will say no, he didn't lose. He might die, but he died for a cause, and his cause is still alive today. And we need people like him to be our guide, guiding light in everything we do, 
In all our lives, we see a lot of injustice, misery, and a lot of unpleasant things around us. And we need people like him, people with a vision, with a different vision, people ready not to comply with the system, people ready to fight and to die eventually for a better tomorrow. I would like to congratulate the mayor and the city of Trinidad, and of course Mr. Serbos for, for their initiative to put this statue here, which represents not only Luis Ticas, but his ideas, which represents all of us, if we want to be civilized people in a civilized world. Thank you. I think it's time for me to say another joke because I don't see the dancers. They're coming? They're here and they're ready. Idomeni from Denver, the youth club. Sorry we're late, you guys. We hit some bad traffic in Colorado Springs. Um, so this is the Idomeneus Cretan Youth Dance Group. Thank you, Elpida. Um, and we're from Denver, and this is a group of kids. There's actually 50 of us, but we had a lot of people going to camp in Greece, and um, this is what we pulled together. So the kids start around six years old. Elpiza, are you going to dance? All right. The kids start at six years old, and they go all the way through college, and even we have some adults. And the first dance that they're going to do is the Cirto, which is the dance of life. If I can pull it up here, make sure I play it right.
All right. The little guys, they want to do this little dance called Apanomeritis. And it's a stomping dance, which actually means little sheep stomp because it replicates the stomping of the sheep's feet. Um, so the little guys might want to scooch up. And Anthony and Elpiza, will you go with Thea and Thea for a second so, the, so you can thank you. They, they've never danced before, actually, and they just joined us today for the first time ever. Dance it? I'm gonna dance it. Do you know it? Yeah, I okay, alright. No I doubt. This one no doubt.
You can get in there. Go ahead. That's my son, that little peanut right there. All right, real big bow. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you so much. We're also dancing at the Greek Festival in Colorado Springs on August 19th. I'm just going to put a little Susta dance on for them to dance off the stage. Thank you so much. Fantastic, beautiful dancing group. The two, the two last dances, the fast ones, most probably the non-Greeks are seeing them for the first time, right? Highly recommended for the cold winters of Colorado. When you're starting your car in the morning, you do these steps, life is beautiful right after that. Also, people were throwing money they're not crazy. They throw money when they get happy. The problem is, the money was blown away. So the tourists will be passing by and say, Trinidad is a beautiful city. You are walking with money all over. So. And now this is the time that we are here for. I was told by the organizers that all the people that are called to the podium and the donors that made it possible, they have to move to the statue area for the unveiling. So please. Guns and lives were cheap in Colorado And coal was king in 1910 And in the deepest coal mine's darkest shadow there was no justice for the working men Miners died in cave-ins and explosions Because the safety laws were not applied For profit mattered more than the lives of all the poor And every day another miner died And the coal was black And the blood was red Miners that did organize always wound up dead. And in those days of anger, a man of peace arose. Words were the weapons that this Tikas chose. In Walsenburg, in Ludlow, and in Sopris, and thirty other towns, they joined the cause. Lewis brought them hope when all was hopeless And he said the owner must obey the laws The miners went on strike in 1913 And shootings left both guards and workers dead And Lewis' voice was heard He told both sides these words Laid down the guns and talk instead and the snow was white and the blood was red That the miners and their wives and their little children bled And the owner took their homes and they lived in tents in rows And words were the weapons that Louis Tikas chose The winter passed and still the mines were striking And the shooting and the killing had not ceased Lewis couldn't stop them all from fighting So the National Guard was called to keep the peace The National Guard arrived with their machine guns And they cracked a rifle over Lewis' head 